Hello and welcome to part three in our physics based interaction system series. In the last parts, we've been setting up the interaction system as well as the ability to grab physics based objects. We're now going to be using physics constraints to constrain objects to each other to create interactions between doors, sliding rails and so forth. So in this episode, we're going to be creating a wardrobe with functioning doors and clothing on a rail. So let's begin. So we have the basic premise of how this is going to work with our interaction system working just fine. Um, we're now going to be working on getting our furniture together and how we can make interactions with the furniture using just physics. So we're going to make various pieces of furniture over the next few episodes. Um, let's start off with the wardrobe today. So we're going to right click, create a blueprint class and choose actor. And this is going to be called our wardrobe. And inside of here, we need to add first of all the class settings, the interact with um, interface, interaction interface. Okay, so now we've got to construct our wardrobe, much like you would do in real life. So you have to add the base, first of all. So we'll call this one wardrobe base. And we'll add the mesh to that. Okay. There's our wardrobe, and we're now going to add the doors. So let's add another static mesh to this, and this be left door. And we'll just add the wardrobe left door. And we're going to get that into a position that is suitable for this. So you can move it forwards, across, and up a little bit. Okay, just line it up and good to go okay not bad okay so now we'll make the right hand door so i'm going to duplicate this one to be the right door and this one we want to choose right door and this one it can be different in the x here we're going to put it in as uh plus 80. see there so now we just want to move these and close that gap there. So I'm just going to move them in. So we'll put that in as probably 75. This says minus 75. Too bad. It's important that you don't want them like touching really. So let's do that minus 77. 77. And that'll do. Okay. So now we've got the doors in, we need, need to make the constraints in. Now the constraints are going to be like the hinges of the doors. So they will handle the movement of the door when you interact with it. So for the left door, we're going to add a physics constraint. And this is going to be left door constraint. And we want to position this constraint on the hinge of the door. So I'm just going to position it over here. In fact, if I clear the location, because I've parented it to it, it should map perfectly to the hinge area. It's perfectly right. <clears throat> so now we need to tell it to constrain what part to which part so over here with its settings in the component name one we're going to put in the name of the door mesh so that'd be the left door and you should see a little red box go around it like that and for the other component we want to add the base into it so wardrobe base and if this is correct you should see a blue box there we go so that's them two added together like that okay um, we now need to set up how it's going to constrain it. So the first thing we need to do is go down to the angular limits. Because we're worried about rotation only, because it's a door hinge. We're going to limit and lock the motion in various places. So we're going to turn uh, the twist motion off to locked. And as you do this, you'll see this shape in the middle here change. So swing to motion, we're going to lock that as well. You should see now the horizontal sort of disc shape. 
I mean, for this one, we can put limited. When you turn to limited, this swing one limit will highlight, and then you can change the angle of the limit over here. Okay, these are half angles, so be aware that if it says 45, that's a 90 degree angle in total. So for this, I'm going to put it in as uh, 65. I found that to be a sweet spot. And I'm going to also change the angle of rotation offset. Now, the reason why is because if I leave it just as it is, it will actually go into the wardrobe as well a little bit. So I need to offset it that way around, but it's 65 degrees, which is this half angle here. Then the Z here, I'm going to put 65. You should see the now the shape has twisted around like so. Hit compile and save this. Okay. So the next thing we want to do is create the look at component bit. So we're going to go to open the graph of the look at. And for this, we're going to put in looked at component, the hit component, the look at actor, we're going to do self. And the message is going to be um, grab door. Compile and save that. And then we go to interact with. I'm going to tell you that you can grab this thing. We then need to tell the door to be a physics enabled so you can actually turn it. So turn on simulate physics and compile that. Now, if I drag this into the world, we should hopefully be able to interact with it. Turn it around. Play. And there we go. So now you can see I can grab hold of the door part, and if I click on it and jostle it a little bit. So the constraint at the moment is not working. Now the constraint isn't working because we forgot to turn. Well, I forgot. To turn the constraint to ignore the collision of its parent. So if you turn on disable collision, what is parented to, it will ignore that collision. So if I go to grab the door now, we have some other issues here. So this typically happens when the placement of the constraint is in the wrong location, which it is. You can see here it's slightly off where we want it to be. So what you have to do is just push this back behind it a little bit, and then that should work. A lot better. Click on it and I can now open the door. So I'm clicking and dragging my mouse to open and close the door. Okay, so now we're going to do this for the other door. So I'm going to go into the wardrobe and we're going to add another constraint this time to the right door. So right door to constraint. And we'll call this one the right door constraint. And we want to position this at the door hinge. So we're going to reset this to there. And like we did with the other one, we're just going to push this back a little bit behind the thing here. And on the, the angular limits, we're going to lock, swing, two, and twist to get the horizontal plane swing. And then on here, we're going to limit the swing one. And then on the angular rotation offset, we're going to change this to minus 65 rather than 65. What minus 65 will mean is that it's going to lock it like it had been, but this time rotating in the other direction. Now, the, the graphical display for this isn't correct, so don't worry about that. Um, you'll find the constraints are a bit temperamental in how they display and how they react. Uh, more than that, when you get to drawers, you'll see what I mean there. Uh, but this should now rotate the way around just fine. So I'm going to go over to here and change the component names. So this is going to be the right door. And the other one is going to be the wardrobe base. Like so. Then you want to tick the disable collision like we did another one as well. Okay, so let's see how this looks. I go up to this one, open this door up, and I can open this door up. Using just left click to click and drag it around. Okay, that looks pretty good. So let's go one step further. Let's add some clothes in here that we can move around on this on this rail. So on this wardrobe, we're going to go inside of here, and we're just going to add 
more components to this one. We're going to add another static mesh. And this would be clothes hanger. And I'm going to choose the hanger. There it is. Okay. I'm just going to move this up into position. I want it to be. And line it up with this rail. Okay, and part of that we also have some clothes on it. So I'm going to add state mesh to the, the hanger. And this would be a uh, shirt. And we'll choose the shirt one. And we'll just reset its position to match the position of the hanger. It's going to rotate itself as well to match the hanger too. So they should line up perfectly in this one if you're using a pack like this. Nonetheless, we'll show you how to do it with this in, instead. So I want it to slide along this rail. So we're going to use another uh, constraint, but this time it's not going to be angular. It's going to be linear constraint. So we're going to add another constraint to this. And this would be the uh, clothes hanger constraint. And on this one, we're going to set the component name here to be clothes hanger. Like so, and the component name for the second one is going to be the base again. So it's good to have the base like a static mesh that isn't going to move, it makes it a bit easier. Uh, we're going to disable collision and we're going to go down to linear limits. So, here I want to limit in the x and y here, so locked in the y and z, and on the limited in the x and y. Now, what this is going to do, we can put in the length of the limit. This basically will draw a line for how where, how where it can go and how far it can go. Now we're not going to see it because it's going to go inside this rail. But if I make it really long, you'll see it come out the edge of the uh, of the wardrobe. Okay, see it there. So that's the thing appearing there. So what I'm going to do is just reposition this. Actually, let's get the right size first of all. That might be a bit easier to see here. Um, so go down to limits and we'll bring that way down. That'll do. And then I'll reposition this to be where the hanger is. So we'll just reset the location here. Zero zero zero. And it should put it in the right place. Like that. Okay. And I'm gonna drag it up to the top here. That's the point where it's hanging from. Now the shirt here. Uh, we was, we want it to hang not just directly dead straight. We do want to give it a little bit of a swing on it. So we're going to go down to the angular limits, and we're going to lock the swing in uh, the uh, we'll lock them all first, and let's do swing one and limit it that one. So this one we want to limit. Uh, I know we'll lock this one. Instead, we'll make it swing the other way. So that will be limited. Uh, no, it's a swing two. There we go. So swing two. And we'll have it limited like this. With the angular rotation offset, we're going to rotate it in the Y by 90 degrees. Uh, maybe nice 90. There we go. So you should get a little like dangle from it. And that's it. So we're going to make the close hanger simulate physics. So. And test this out. Play. Grab the door open. Oh, so we've got an issue there where it isn't clamped to the thing correctly. And the oh, okay, so it's clamped to the wrong axis. You see how it's sliding only up and down. This is what I mean about constraints. They will change based upon who they're parented to and everything else like that. So on here, I'm going to if I change, if I, I'm going to lock the angular stuff for now. That's going to just make it complicated. Let's get it working side to side first of all. Um, and then go here. We're going to change the rotation of this to nothing as well. And okay, that was the reason why is because the angle was wrong. So let's change that to Y motion instead. And let's see how that looks without any angular stuff on it first of all. And Open this up, open this up. There it is hanging. I can click and I can drag it along the 
on the rail and you can see it slide along the on the rail uh, my line trace is missing it now <laughs> it's gone too far but there it is working play again and open it up and there's the shirt and i can grab the shirt and yeah so we can actually add multiple of those to it as well so this clothes hanger i can what i can do is just duplicate it and it'll come with everything attached to it there is another clothes hanger and this one we're going to move along here and with this one as well we're going to duplicate this that on there that on there and reset their location to match that one and I'm going to change the uh, or if they're going to change the component that the constraint is locked onto I'm going to add one to here and that's it constrained there and we are then going to add uh, I want to change the shirt here to shirt two. So that is your wardrobe furniture completed. In the next episode, we're going to work on the next piece of furniture, the chest of drawers, making the chest of drawers with three drawers that can be pulled out and closed at will, as well as go over some of the other minor settings we can change to improve the physics interactions of our furniture. So watch that episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Ailey where you can catch all my episodes before anyone else, sometimes months in advance. Make sure you're subscribed and thanks for watching. Bye everyone.